Over the last few months, you've likely heard the term NFT a whole lot, from video game publishers trying to add them to their games and quickly removing them again, to celebrities using crude auto-generated apes as their social media profile pictures, and even the great NFT heist that every news outlet rushed to report on. With literally a billion tech bro dollars invested in NFTs, they must be the future, right? Well, to know that, you need to know what an NFT is, and probably more importantly, what it isn't. Of all of the NFT news you are likely to have seen, this kind of bored ape image has garnered a whole lot of headlines and attention. Celebrities like Eminem have been paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, actually $450,000 in Eminem's case, for this well, somewhat crude auto-generated image of an ape. Here's the thing though, this image, the, the artwork, isn't an NFT. NFT stands for non-fungible token, and this image isn't that. In essence, what he paid nearly half a million dollars for is this, the, the token ID. That's the unique, the, the non-fungible part of this, and this is basically your receipt to say that you own something. Before we go any further, let's take a step back and look at what is fungible and not. Fungible means that something is replaceable by another thing of equal value. It's not truly unique, it's, it's interchangeable. So the, the food in your fridge or the change in your pocket could be considered fungible, as if someone swapped them out for functionally identical but physically different items, you wouldn't mind. Okay, someone randomly replacing all of the food in your fridge would be pretty weird, but still hopefully you get the point. Fungibility can also change from person to person, as a piece of, say, decorative jewellery that someone doesn't wear very often is going to be more fungible to, than someone's, you know, uh, family heirloom ring, as the latter couldn't be replaced with something of equal value, as that equal value doesn't exist because it is a, an emotional attachment rather than the, the physical goods. So by definition, a non-fungible item is fully unique and cannot be replaced. There can only be one. The Mona Lisa, for example, and most other priceless pieces of art would be considered non-fungible. So what is a non-fungible token? Well, that is a token, a, a piece of data that gets stored on the Ethereum blockchain. Slight note, there are different kinds of uh, NFTs and blockchains that can be stored on, but Ethereum is the kind of primary one. Now, wait, 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 wait. Ethereum? Blockchain? What's that all about? Well, Ethereum is a cryptocurrency, a digital currency, that is one of the biggest and most popular. Although the original cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, is still probably the most sort of mainstream and widely recognizable, but Ethereum is uh, one of the slightly newer and definitely slightly more improved ones as well. As for blockchain, that's pretty much what it says. It's a long chain of blocks of data where those blocks contain logs of transactions. Much like how your bank does for, you know, when you transfer money between your accounts or to other people, but on the blockchain, those transactions are all public and anonymous, at least for now. The benefit of them being public is that the chain becomes immutable as in it's fixed, it's, it's unchanging, it's a, it's a permanent record. Everyone has a copy of the chain, so that no one can try and go back and change a transaction without everyone else knowing, and also being able to ignore their incorrect version of the chain. So, back to the NFT. What is it actually saving? What, what does an NFT actually look like? Well, since everyone who wants to sort of transact on the blockchain needs a copy of the chain before they can try and add to it, you can't store all that much data in each transaction. 
You can't store the actual image or, or file, whatever, as that's far too big. Instead, you save the usual transaction details you would like any other, like a, a specific ID for that transaction, a token ID, uh, also the sender and receiver's addresses, the value and any fees paid, and a, a small block of data. For these bored ape images, it's slightly different as uh, effectively they're not quite the same as a conventional NFT uh, like say this Nyankat GIF uh, because what that one stores is essentially just a web link. Well, when I say web link, it's not just a, a link to Google Drive or Dropbox, it's not a conventional link at all. It uses IPFS, which genuinely stands for the Interplanetary File System. Yeah. Much like torrenting, IPFS is a peer-to-peer -peer file hosting and transfer protocol where, in theory, there isn't a, a centralized single server hosting the, the one and only copy of the, the file, the artwork, whatever. Instead, anyone can access and make available or seed the content so that even if the initial producer's system goes offline, their hard drive fails and they lose everything, well, that file should be dispersed among the, the countless other systems that are active on the network, and you can get the file from any one of them instead. Now, that method does have its downsides. Much like torrenting, if no one has a copy of the file who's active on the network, that link is dead. Like, sure, it can be brought back online, but the token is effectively worthless without the artwork that it, it's meant to be linking to, so if it goes down permanently, well, you've effectively lost your investment in an instant. And that isn't just some hypothetical, major artists' IPFS links have gone dark for millions of dollars worth of value just disappearing for hours or days. It's also not always as simple as a link to the file itself. Sometimes, like in the case of that Nyankat GIF, it's actually a link to a file which itself has another link to the video. While IPFS is also an immutable system, as in once a file is, is put into the network, it cannot be updated or even deleted, in theory this could be used as a, a vector for scammers using redirects, especially to conventional web links, to swap out the artwork after purchasing. That's called a rug pull, and it seems to be well, worryingly common. In fact, uh, an, ar an artist uh, actually purposefully rug pulled their entire collection after the sale to prove a point, a, a statement piece, if you will. While IPFS should help with that, there is no guarantee that the file that you think you're purchasing will stay intact or even online. There's also another important distinction that I should make clear. When purchasing an NFT, you are not purchasing the artwork. You're purchasing the token ID, which may or may not grant you some level of rights over the connected works. In the case of the Bored Ape Yacht Club, those Bored Ape images I've mentioned, their off-chain, i.e. conventional terms of sale agreement, states that you own the underlying Bored Ape, the art, completely. However, they then go on to grant you both per, uh, personal and commercial use licenses, meaning that they still own the copyrights to the image. And again, that is an agreement that is made outside the actual transaction. That could just as easily be a, a PayPal payment that they publish transaction IDs for and would function essentially, or in the, the legal definition, the same way. But for many works, you don't even get that. Some expressly forbid commercial use, and some are more akin to you, say, purchasing a song on iTunes. Sure, you own that copy, but that doesn't mean that you own the song or the rights to it or anything other than legal access to that copy. Of course, since the, the blockchain is public, all of the artworks and links to them are all public knowledge, which means that I can access Eminem's bored ape image, the original no less, 
just the same as Shady himself, the only difference is that he can say he legally owns that copy, whereas I can't. Same for the Nyan Cat GIF. If you take away just one thing from this video, I hope it's this. When you buy an NFT, you aren't buying the art. You're buying the token, the receipt to say that you own something. If the link to the art fails, you have no proof of what it is that you own, and moreover, because the, the sale agreement is, is off-chain, you can't even guarantee that the rights that you're invariably licensing will be yours forever, if you even got any in the first place. Much like everything that we see as, uh, as valuable, the value essentially comes from what people are willing to pay for it. The Mona Lisa is theorized to be worth somewhere around one billion dollars, but if for some reason everyone decided that they didn't care, then that value is just completely gone. Now, with the Mona Lisa in particular, there's a whole load of reasons why it's unlikely to become worthless overnight. The, the history, the, the provenance, who the artist is, and its general popularity. And in theory, you have those things with NFTs as well. That's what the, the token and the blockchain are all about, proving exactly who owns them, who, you know, how much they were sold for, and who's owned them previously, who the creator is, all that sort of stuff. But unlike a, a physical, one-of-a-kind, 500-year-old painting, where the, the non-fungibility of its, the item itself garners much of its inherent value, Digital, often procedurally generated works like the, the Bored Ape collection, don't have much, well, underwriting them beyond their current popularity. That's the, the risk you're taking, at least as a, an investor. There are also some pretty significant issues with the technology kind of as a whole. The anonymity of the artists, sellers, and buyers mean you get a wide variety of scams. A good example of one is where an artist makes a, a collection of works and then pays their friends and family to purchase some of their pieces for ever-increasing values, and then finally convinces a, a legitimate buyer to part ways with thousands on the premise that the value of the works will keep going up, only for the, the schmuck to be left holding the bag with nothing in it because no one else wants the nondescript random artworks. There's also the small problem of copyright law, and uh, mostly the fact that a lot of people who mint NFTs would seem to think that it doesn't apply to them. Uh, you don't have to own the, the rights to the content that you're minting. And actually, what's worse is that once it is on the IPFS network, it can't be removed. Now, apparently, if you have your lawyer contact their legal department, they will block the, their nodes from rebroadcasting the files, but they can't delete every copy on the network. That doesn't mean that the, the minter nor any current owners are free from any legal troubles, though which might be something to keep in mind. And the final thing I'll mention here is actually much more serious, which is that you don't actually have to purchase an NFT to become the owner of one. Anyone with your wallet address could transfer one to you without you doing anything. That sounds great, right? Free art, awesome. Well, here's the thing. If they happen to know, well, say your uh, address, phone number, or other difficult to change contact information, they can send you an NFT which includes that information. And now it is tied irreversibly to your wallet, publicly stored on the blockchain for everyone to see. That is called doxing, and it's what gets people swatted and killed. Now, can these problems be solved? Well, possibly, but likely not with the current system. To solve the doxing, for example, you would likely need to make the tokens or chain at least partially mutable, editable, which kind of defeats the purpose of well, the whole technology. And to fix the scanning, you would likely need to remove the anonymity, which again is one of the key benefits of cryptocurrency as a whole. Even if this is the start of something that we'll all be using in 10 years' time, 
This feels more like a, an open alpha, complete with many of the early adopter bugs, many of which don't appear to be, well, certainly easily fixable within the current system. You investing in NFTs now isn't as much getting in on the ground floor as much as it's betting on Laserdisc CDs, or I suppose not even CDs, Laserdiscs, hoping not only that the content's value will grow, but also that the underlying technology will take off and become mainstream. To make it clear, I do hold some cryptocurrency, and I've been interested in the, the technology as a whole since I think early 2014, maybe even late 2013. I actually used to mine on my, uh, my HD6870. Cool kid, I know. Uh, and I, I see a lot of, of promise in the tech, but I can't say that NFTs are quite it. You aren't buying the, the arts, you aren't even directly buying the, the rights or ownership to it, that has to be agreed outside of the transaction, and it's for publicly available digital goods. You can go to a site like this and download all of the actual original uh, Bored Ape files. I guess maybe if the file hosting was tied cryptographically to the artwork directly, then maybe that could be useful. But then just how is that all that much different from buying from the undeniably better art, or buying undeniably better art from the countless other existing marketplaces on the internet? I think the answer, for at least right now anyway, is pretty much just bragging rights. But why is there all this hype around these? Well, from an investor perspective, if you missed out on the dot-com bubble, the, the rise of big tech, and the original crypto boom, you've basically been primed to think that since this is being sold as the, the future, it's actually a, a massive opportunity that you need to, to get on this ASAP. With enough investor bucks behind it, it starts to seem convincing to, to regular folks and to influencers like celebrities and then it kind of snowballs. Seeing stories like Eminem paid $450,000 for a picture of an ape on every media outlet, well, that implies that they're inherently worth a whole lot, and then the cycle kind of continues. I should also make it clear that I'm in no way bashing artists getting in on the gold rush, or people who are actually buying the art because they genuinely like it. Think of this more as a, a warning to people who are planning on investing in NFTs, especially the, the artworks themselves, not, say, the underlying technology. This is quite possibly the most risky investment you can make right now, as I'm being honest, and especially from speaking from very much the outside, this sure looks like a bubble to me, but hey, as long as you understand that and understand the risks, I sure as hell won't stop you, so... Uh, best of luck. Of course, with that said, uh, that is a, a bit of an explanation about NFTs and, of course, plenty of my thoughts in there too, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about NFTs? Are they the, the future of how we, you know, interact and, and purchase things digitally? Or are they more of a, uh, well, bubble hype uh, instead? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also support the channel and keep me making these videos by using the YouTube join button, or you can support on Patreon instead if you'd rather, and get some cool rewards for doing so. Or you could pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one uh, from the, uh, the, hopefully the YouTube bar underneath or the link in the description. Uh, there are a load of ones that I designed myself, or there's also plenty of other affiliate links or places like Amazon or Overclock UK, some VVM options actually if you're interested or if you do want to donate some uh, probably some bitcoin specifically then there's a bitcoin address down there for you as well uh, otherwise that's kind of it uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions do feel free to leave those in the comments as well i'll leave some more videos on the end cards that you want to keep watching and yeah thanks for watching we'll see you on the next video